Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about how accounting is used in a, in a society to make us more governable, more calculable, and somehow more obedient to the powers to be. And uh, I'm going to use two examples that are quite convenient and quite uh, familiar to most of us here. I'm going to talk about Brexit, which will be the main menu. But I'll begin with uh, something that is more common in, in, in this area. I mean, this particular uh, building, uh, Tata Steel. I think uh, two years ago, if you recall, uh, there was a possibility that this company is going to be closed. And one of the issues is that when the information was given to the media or the, the people, they were bringing things like uh, Tata would lose like one million uh, pounds a day, you know? And also, and then the union came in and, 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 and the politicians came in and talked about the number of people gonna lose their jobs and you know how the, uh, the, the jobs will be taken to other parts of the world. And you know, so many things were, were, were being discussed. And there were emotions, you know, coming up. You know, I remember watching TV. You know, like uh, uh, this lady actually, you know, uh, almost crying in tears, like you know, this is our livelihood, right? And uh, and then in the same year, on the twenty uh, fourth of June, we, we had uh, the referendum uh, results for Brexit that uh, the UK will leave the EU. Of course, the issue the issue is still going on, and I'm sure that probably you let more as I continue. Now. I remember on the 23rd of June, I was in Portugal at a conference, right? It was it, uh, because I'm an academic, so I travel around Europe to you know, present papers and also to listen to what other people are saying. So when I went there, what was quite interesting is that uh, most of the people in the room were from mainland Europe, right? And then that was, uh, the, uh, the event was from the 23rd to 24th. On the 24th, uh, when I went into the room, uh, somebody was supposed to talk about uh, EU and its uh, uh, implication about you know, global power, right? I remember when I went there, the topic had changed. Why? Because they got the news that the UK, uh, the UK is living in the EU, right? And the mood was quite uh, depressed, right? That these are the people from mainland Europe. Of course, there are some other people from the UK, uh, like myself, but as you can tell, I'm originally from Malawi. So, it was quite interesting that you know uh, people there were quite depressed, and then after the conference, I flew back to Wales. I live in Newport, right? So I, I arrived a bit late, so I was like, okay, let me get something to eat. Yeah, I, I had a takeaway, and it was a bit night, and I, I, I remember it was a Friday, I, if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm if I'm if I'm if I'm correct. And then I met this other guy who was like looking at me, very upset. And he said, you know what, go back to your country. I'm like, what's going on? And I said, okay. And this other guy came in and said, don't, don't say that to him and this and that. And I mean, I just take my chicken wings <laughs> and my bag and then I left. And then the accent of this person, I mean, the accent was like, he was Spanish. So it was quite strange, like, okay. So you're from Spain, you asked me to go back to my country and this is, the EU was about divorcing from the lack of Spain and others. What's going on? But then I went home and I said, okay, how best can I understand the situation? Why was that person angry to the point that he was asking me to go home, right? So I said, okay, instead of me jumping the bandwagon of accusing people of saying, okay, oh, this is more to do like, you know, uh, racism and stuff like that. No, 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 I'm gonna use my accounting hat to try to understand what is going on. Then, probably, you remember this. <laughs> yeah? You, you remember this bus about, uh, sending us, uh, uh, the, the e e e uh, UK sending money to the, to, the, to the EU and probably we could save three million uh, pounds a week. And if you look at where the bus is and the image and you look at behind it, you've got the parliament there, isn't it? So there's a bit of image of power there, yeah? But then you've got other people saying, no, 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 actually we don't have to leave the EU, right? Because the cost of living the EU is like, you know, 4,300 pounds per person. Now, going back to the previous one, you can see that this is more to do with the NHS. This is our livelihood. Yeah, this is our life, right? And they'll put a figure there, right? Now, when I talk about accounting, some of you is like, okay, why are you talking about accounting? Basically, when I say accounting in this context, I'm looking at the situation whereby you mobilize figures in a standardized format 
so that you can make others act or govern. So it could be budgets, it could be profit and loss account, it could be anything. So in this way, we can assume that the 350 million was calculated in a certain way to drive at that figure. Because I, not many people were actually uh, disagreeing with this figure until later on, right? So what about this? So you've got the proponents of EU saying that we shouldn't leave. And they talk about the cost of living. So they were playing at more personal level, right? At more like more uh, at, uh, our wages or maybe our, our cost of living as at, at household level. Then, what about this, right? You can say that, okay, if you want to save 55 million, leave the EU, right? So we, we have got a situation where we have got contradictions. We have got other people say, leave the EU, others say, you know, stay in the EU. But the common denominator, they're using accounting, money, you know, figures to justify that. And then, finally, we got this. It was a tight close, right? Saying, so, okay, breaking news. You know, we are leaving the EU. And again, things were quoted in percentages, right? 48 and 52. Remember what I said earlier on? Accounting can be used as a source of governing our bodies, right? So they will use those figures to the point that at some point, they were able now to distinguish majority and minority in, in the sense of 52 and what? And 48%. But it never ended there because the gap was just too narrow, right? I think going to your point earlier on about uh, winning and you no know, depression, whether it's only one year, I mean, the gap was too narrow. The debate continued, right? So somebody said the 350 million claim was an error. How can accountants? make an error. <laughs> Why? But, the world, but did the world go mad? No, it did not. Right? So actually they say that, you know, they described the referendum as a dumb idea. But it was an event. Why is that an idea? Okay. Then, the same bus, but now a different figure now. Another person. Now this is after the, refer after the referendum. You thought the issue was dead and buried. But figures started popping up, right? And they said the figure was bogus. You know, on the bus, somebody said that this is the, 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 the uh, Ross Mogg saying that, okay, uh, Ross Mogg saying, you know, the remainder propaganda talking about this bus, the figure was what? Was bogus, right? Okay. And recently, we heard that two million I mean, $2 billion uh, dollars of, uh, of cost in, in, in medicine that is talking higher up in, in NHS. Now, this is, what I this is what I want to discuss with you about accounting. I've just shown you the figures and so on and so forth. The issue with accounting figures is that in a democratic society, you have got politicians that tend to use accounting figures or figures in a way to legitimize an idea, to legitimize something. So if you look at the 350 million, the people that wanted the e UK to leave the EU used that to justify that, you know, all the problems we do have at the moment can be solved by if we stop sending money to the e e EU and give it back to the NHS. So they had to connect that with the NHS because it's our livelihood, it's our identity, it's something that is associated with United Kingdom. So basically, they were able to legitimize that. In doing so, because NHS is close to our heart, it kind of evokes our emotions. So you remember the guy who said, go back to your country, right? So probably he thought, maybe I was taking maybe his job because there was an issue of you know, uh, wages going down and so on and so forth. So you have got this idea that is very difficult to quantify, but then you have to make it calculable so that everyone can mention wherever they're going. So if you look at the 350 uh, uh, million, million bus, everybody, that image was in their head. Everybody was looking at that figure. Whether that figure made sense or not is none of their business. So what accounting does, it legitimizes an idea. It's not just passive. It's not something that is there like, you know, bookkeeping, you know, uh, recording credit and debits. It goes far beyond that. Not only that, 
it creates a space for debate, right? This is where by now you can see that the Remainers and the people that wanted to uh, leave the EU, they had to debate, but that space was made fertile by accounting figures. It wasn't just, you know, debating anyhow. If you remember, uh, when we had the debates, uh, where we had uh, Nigel Farage and, 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 and the likes of David Cameron talking, when you look closer, you're going to see that figures were talked every now and then. The debate becomes more figures. What that means is that it kind of objectifies the world. It kind of makes it more as see the world as, as something that is real. But if you remember, through my presentation here, somebody said that referendum was a dumb idea. So basically, much as it is something we see a, a, an event of uh, Brexit as, as, as something that is concrete, but it can be an idea that can be maybe uh, made it real uh, through, through numbers. And also, when figures are presented, they can evoke emotions. And that is quite common. I give you an example of Tata whereby you're saying that, okay, uh, people are gonna lose their jobs and so on and so forth. People are upset. But then when the accountants start saying that, you know, we are losing one million pounds a day, people take a moment back and say, okay, maybe our anger should be directed somewhere. I think we are losing money. The same thing with Brexit, right? When they start attaching figures to things that are close to us, we tend to become upset. But they also use the same figures that actually made us angry to cool our tempers. Now, the message I'm trying to send home at this point in time is that sometimes when these debates, which kind of gonna change our life or transform the world we're living in, when they're given to us, we shouldn't just view them as the truth. They are facts indeed, because they're collected in a certain way and presented in a certain way, but they can be the truth that are kind of manufactured. I'm not saying that the remainers were good or the leavers were, were bad or vice versa. That's not my point. My point is, when somebody says that, George, go back to your country, I use my accounting heart to try to understand how is this person influenced to say those words. Because they didn't just wake up and say, you know what, go. there's something that was fed into this person and started believing that the world out there is in trouble. The world out there is this way. And in doing so, accounting is constructing a world through numbers. Yep. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about accounting numbers is that people who are in power, they can stand from a distance and watch us fighting one another through the numbers that they've given over there. If you look at the budget, they present the budget and they leave it up to us to discuss or to debate. And in doing so, we start thinking in a different way. Look at a timesheet in the workplace. What does it do? We record our hours and our rate of the hour, right? Depending on how much we, how many, how many hours we work and the money that we earn, we can see ourselves as productive and not productive. Accounting, constructing who is supposed to be productive and who is not supposed to be productive. Look at the pension age, right? Keeps on changing. But for them to justify that, they use accounting figures. For them to change the pension scheme, they say that probably our pension is in deficit. We don't have enough resources. But if you look at that process of doing that, accounting is embedded in that. But for accounting to get its legitimacy, what it does is like it takes uh, other bodies of knowledge, like statistics, economics, and bring them into the equation so that you know they become look more powerful. But in doing so, accounting helps the process of democracy. Because democracy without calculation, Pointless. I hope this is the message I want to get across to you. Thank you very much. Thank you.